Hello everyone and welcome back to my Minecraft Technopack tutorial guide. In this video I'll be showing you how heat is generated in a nuclear reactor using Talon Fire Mages, I believe that's who came up with this, I don't remember where I found that, but um, yeah I believe that's who generated, or who came up with the reactor planner, I'll be using their reactor planner as I just said. Um, I'll also be referencing some information from a couple different places or actually one place that's displayed in two different places but this is a forum post made by Albaca the Industrial Craft 2 developer obviously um, and I'll post a link to this in the uh, description below but there's also a slightly easier place to understand this it's on the Industrial Craft wiki I will also link to this as well um, it's got all the same information it's just a little bit it's organized a little bit nicer, so it's easier to find stuff, easier to understand, basically. So, if you remember from the EU generation video I did not too long ago, you should remember that when a uranium cell is placed like so, let me just switch that back to general information there, when a uranium cell is placed like so, it will check the four squares around itself. It will check the one above, the one below, the one to the left, and the one to the right, for uranium cells to calculate how many times it will pulse per tick. Um, what I didn't mention in the last video is it also checks for any type of cooling component. Now a cooling component can be a coolant cell, it can be an integrated reactor plating, or it can be an integrated heat disperser. Doesn't matter, any one of those three and it will decide how it's going to calculate the heat. Um, Single-use coolants, I don't believe, count the same way as a standard cooling component does, um, and I won't be covering single-use coolants as that's for the extremely advanced reactors, and there's no real point in trying to explain them. If you are trying to use them, you'll be able to figure them out, but if you are looking to learn how to use them, look at the SUC information tab. That'll give you a most of the information you need as well as, I don't know, maybe the additional information tab. Yeah. So, anyways, moving on. Um, when the uranium cell checks in the four squares around itself, if it sees four cooling cells, and I'll use coolant cells uh, for, the, for these examples, if it sees four cooling components, it knows that it's only going to pulse once. Now, with four cooling components surrounding a cell, it will generate four heat per pulse. And since it's only pulsing once, that's four heat per tick. Um, now, heat generation is obviously calculated per pulse, whereas heat loss, as I'm about to tell you, is, or as I'm about to explain, is um, calculated per tick. So, this uranium cell is going to generate four heat in total for this tick, and it is going to split that four heat by in or by these four coolant cells. Now each one of these coolant cells loses one heat per tick. So a setup like this using one uranium cell with four individual coolant cells will be a 100% safe reactor with an infinite number of cycles as you can see as it will always have zero generated heat. Um, now when you only have three coolant cells Yes, when you have three coolant cells, the heat generation is going to be six heat per pulse. So, as you can see, we're only going to have it, it's only going to pulse once, so it's going to generate six heat. It is going to divide six by three, which are the three individual cooling components. It's then going to send two heat to each individual component. If we reduce this number down to two, we're going to generate eight heat per pulse. It's going to divide 8 heat by 2 cooling components and each component will receive a total of 4 heat per tick. Now if we reduce this one more we're going to generate 10 heat per pulse now and it is going to send all 10 of that heat into one cooling component. So obviously that one cooling component is not going to last very long. Now if we don't have any cooling components Obviously, when I get rid of that, you can see that this stops showing red, and it looks like it will actually run forever. And, of course, I mean, technically it will, because it's surrounded by water. 
However, if I actually reduce the number of water. Hmm. All right. Well, bad example, but with one uranium cell surrounded by nothing, no coolant cells, no extra uranium cells, it's going to generate 10 heat, same as with one. However, it is going to send all 10 heat directly into the nuclear reactor hull. Now, the basic nuclear reactor hull will hold 10,000 heat, and I believe for every reactor chamber you add on to that, it increases the maximum heat by 1,000. So a nuclear reactor with six chambers will have a total max hull temperature of 16,000 heat. Um, and when the reactor reaches critical mass or maximum heat, which would be 16,000 in this case, it will explode. Um, so let's say we have three coolant, coolant cells here and we have two uranium cells. The top uranium cell is going to check the four squares around it. Left, right, above, nothing. But it sees the uranium cell below it, so it pulses twice. Now, because it sees no coolant cells or coolant, cooling components surrounding it, it is going to generate 10 heat per pulse. It's pulsing two times, that's 20 heat per tick. Same with the bottom one. It is going to check the four squares around it. It sees one uranium cell above it, so it is going to pulse twice. However, for the bottom one, it sees three cooling components. So it is going to generate six heat per pulse. And since it is pulsing twice, that is a total of 12 heat per tick, divided by three cooling components, or four heat per component. Now, of course, for the coolant cells, that's a little bit more than they can handle since they only lose one heat per tick. But that's basically how you calculate it out. Um, and that's pretty much the gist of how heat is generated. Now, I want to explain how um, a integrated reactor plating works. Uh, excuse me. The uh, integrated reactor plating will uh, will take whatever heat it is given and it will distribute it out amongst however many other cooling components are surrounding it. So as you can see, when I place three coolant cells around it, it will actually send its it will actually send its heat out into these three. Now I'm just surrounding these by or with other coolant coolant cells just to reduce the amount of heat they generate. Um, so as you can see, this is going to generate this is going to pulse twice because it's got two uranium cells. It's going to pulse twice, and it is going to go one, two, three cooling components, or six heat in total, times two. That's 12 heat. So it's going to send four heat in each direction. Now, this coolant cell receives four. This coolant cell receives four. And this integrated reactor plating will receive four. However, the integrated reactor plating will spread that heat between the next three coolant cells. So each one of these is receiving just over one heat each. And it actually, the integrated reactor plating will lose about 0.1 heat per tick. Alright. Um, and obviously this will only work if it is next, if the coolant cells and the integrated reactor platings will only work next to a uranium cell or next to a heat dispenser. Now the heat dispensers Heat dispensers are where most of your cooling designs will be developed. Um, for example, if I have one uranium cell here, it is going to generate 10 heat directly into the, the hull. Now, a heat dispenser will absorb up to 25 heat per tick from the hull. It can also send 25 heat per tick to the hull. Now what it does with that 25 heat is it will split it up in four directions, into, into these four directions here. Now I'm just using coolant cells, but you could theoretically use integrated heat, integrated heat reactor platings as well. But it's, it can send up to six heat in each direction and it will hold one heat itself, or it will keep one heat itself. Now each uh, cooling component, whether it's a reactor plating, a coolant cell, or a heat disperser, can actually hold up to, I believe, 10,000 heat individually, so they will gain heat over time. 
and not break. However, when they reach 10,000 heat, they will break and your reactor will become more unstable. Um, so that's pretty much how coolant cells and industrial or industrial integrated reactor plating and indust integrated heat dispersers work. Um, one thing to make note of quickly, however, is that while this oops, while a integrated reactor plating will spread heat between three uh, the next three items, it will only send the heat to one more integrated reactor plating. So as you can see, the top one here sends the heat into the coolant cell on the left, the coolant cell on the right, into the integrated reactor plating below. Now, so there's the first one and there's a the second one. And it will send the heat to the second one. It will not, however, send the heat to a third one. Um, that's just the way it's designed. It will only transfer heat up to one past the first integrated reactor plating. The only real way to learn how your reactors are going to work is by playing around with them. I can explain it all I want, but you're not going to fully understand it unless you try to play around with it and you look at the information at the bottom. Um, and again, the only other thing I really have to say in regards to design the reactor is that if your cooling components like all of these are showing are dark it means they are not going to be used at all in the reactor they are essentially doing nothing and you do not need them now as you can see when I place this here all of them stop being dark but they do change as uh, these two become red that means they will break before the end of the cycle. And if you remove these, theoretically you would see how long it would take for it to break. I mean, that's not entirely accurate, but basically, sorry, um, basically you know that these are going to break before the end of the generation time. Now, this setup here isn't very functional, but you can see that it will actually run for 99.99% of a cycle or about 166 minutes and 39 seconds and I believe the maximum generation time is literally like one second more than that it's not much um, so basically a reactor built like this is going to explode basically well it looks like it would explode right before it would finish which would be kind of counter dramatic anti anti climatic Climactic is what I'm looking for, not anti-dramatic. Um, so yeah, that pretty much sums it up. Um, like I said, I'll link all the pages that I've used to get my information from so you guys can actually go and look it up yourselves and play around with that and use the information. Um, I think I mentioned this in the last video. I might start doing some TechIt stuff. I've actually started building a TechIt server um, that I might actually host, and if any of you guys are interested, um, you know, leave a comment or just send me a personal message. I'm still working on trying to figure out how to get the port forwarding and stuff set up properly, as well as getting the plugins and stuff set up so that I don't have to worry about getting griefed, obviously. Um, if any of you guys are interested in joining and I do end up doing videos, I'll probably end up using some of you guys for help. I mean, I don't need the help to do it, but just as a more interactive type thing, I think that might be kind of cool to have a little bit extra help showing some stuff off. Um, so yeah, if you're interested in that, you know, leave me a comment or a personal message, that would be great. If not, you know, whatever. Like the video if you liked it. If it was informational, please let me know. I appreciate all the comments I get, um, I appreciate being told that my inf that my videos are inf informational for you guys. You guys that you guys have learned something, um, and it does inspire me to put out more videos when I'm here when I'm getting feedback from you guys saying that it is useful information, and I love getting uh, comments from you guys that say like you know hey how about you do a video on this, because then I know it's something you guys want to see, and it makes me want to put out that video more. Um, so again, thanks for watching, guys. Um, if it was helpful, you know, let me know. If you're interested in the tech thing, again, also let me know. Um, and yeah.
Thanks for watching, guys. Good luck, and...